We count it a privilege that he calls us friends. Let us pray, Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come to this sacred moment, Lord God, where we will hear a word from you. Speak Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more, because it only happens after prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I won't be before you long. Amen. We're looking forward to our fellowship. But on this um, Leadership and Ministry Sunday, I would like for us to turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. And we want to look at verse 1. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Looking at one of our old one of our major prophets, amen, in the Old Testament, starting with verse 1. And may we all stand for the reading of God's holy word. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, which each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. Yes. They were calling to one another. Yes. Holy, holy, holy oh, yes. is the Lord Almighty. Yes, sir. The whole earth is full yes. of his glory. Mm -hmm. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. Mm -hmm. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, yes, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Minds have seen the King, yes. the Lord Almighty. And one of the seraphim fled, flew mm -hmm. to me with a coal in his hand, <laughs> which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth yes. and said, See, this has touched your lips. Yes. Your guilt is taken away mm -hmm. and your sin is atoned. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Who shall go for us? Mm -hmm. Who shall we send? Yes. And I said, here I, I am, mm -hmm. send me. Can I say that again? Here I am, send me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For a little while, I'd like to preach from the subject. Matter of fact, I would like Isaiah to come and preach for me. Why I volunteered. Why I volunteered. Here I stand with an assignment from God to be the prophet to his people. The spiritual and moral compass of the nation has shifted, driven by the latter portion of the tenure of King Uzziah. King Uzziah was generally a good king with a long and prosperous reign. However, pride would poison his mind to the point that he tried to take over the duties of the high priest. This pride and lack of reverence and awe for the things of God altered the hearts of the people of God. They believed that they were blessed 
Yet God's wrath will soon come upon them. It was my mission to go and tell the people of their sin and spiritual condition. I received this assignment because I volunteered. Eavesdropping on a conversation as I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send? Who shall go for us? And I surprisingly, without any hesitation, I said, here I am, send me. Yeah. Now understand, I did not volunteer for this prophetic assignment mm -hmm. because I thought I was qualified. Yeah. Because I wasn't. I didn't volunteer because I thought I could do it better than everyone else. I didn't volunteer because I wanted my name on the road to be in with the other prophets or for people to look at me. The truth of the matter is I volunteered because I couldn't help myself. I responded to this kingdom call because I had a few life-changing encounters. You see, this all started because something died in my life. I know you thought I was going to say because I saw the Lord. We'll get to that. But the truth is, I saw the Lord after King Uzziah died. Which could imply that sometimes in order for us to see God and to see ourselves in God and to see ourselves differently in God, some things have to die in our lives. Oh, you're not with me. It's all right. It doesn't necessarily mean a physical death. But it can be any type of death, whether it's spiritually, spiritual, financial, emotional, relational, or psychological. Some of us are asking for God to show us some things in our lives. We are asking God to do some things in our lives. But the reality is there are some things that are reigning in our lives that are hindering our spiritual perception and redirecting our moral and ethical compass. We can't see God while we're in relationships with certain people. We can't see God being dependent on certain substances and habits as our escape and relief. We can't see God while we, we can't see God while we're comfortable in certain environments. I truly believe that every once in a while, God will permit death in the ear areas of our lives that are hindering our perception towards seeing a greater life in the kingdom. Do I have a witness in here? You didn't know why they left, but some people who are no longer dealing with you are now gone. You don't know why they stopped calling you and texting you, but they're not no longer communicating with you. You don't know why they're no longer your Facebook friend, but they befriended you. You don't know why certain events have taken place in your life, but they did. And as, as soon as it happened, as soon as they left, you saw the Lord high and lifted up. But do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here that knows that you're here today? Because some things have been moved out of your life. Some habits had to die. Some people had to leave. Some circumstances you knew you had to lose. So you can see God and see yourself in God. was the embodiment mm -hmm. of the inconsistencies of humanity. We started out, he started out all right. But human pride is the kryptonite for every human king. Uh, the one whom we looked up to for spiritual and social leadership and influence showed us the frailty and inconsistency of flesh. Yeah. And once I encountered the inconsistency of humanity, the inconsistencies of a human king, I saw the immutable, the unchanging king of kings and lord of lords, yeah. high and lifted up. Yeah. Sometimes, hear me, we, de we deify. Mm -hmm. We make gods and idolize certain things and people. The truth of the matter is, once King 
Isaiah changed in his ways and then he died. I learned not to put my trust yeah. in the temporary and the mundane. Sometimes we need human disappointment to see divine hope. And after King Isaiah died, human disappointment, I saw the Lord, divine hope. And is, is there anybody here that can testify that you are here After, after all the things happened to you, after people had disappointed you, you couldn't rely on that BFF anymore. Once you called that person and you couldn't get a dial tone, when you called that person and you saw that person they turn their back on you, you realize the inconsistencies of humanity. But then at the same time, you felt the presence of God. You heard the Lord speak to your heart. You got a phone Telling you that this too shall pass. You got a word from God after you've been disappointed. Is there anybody here that, that can testify that, that can't nobody do you like Jesus? You search all over and couldn't find nobody. You search high and low and still couldn't find nobody. And you realize that after human disappointment, nobody greater. Nobody greater than God. Do I have a witness here? You can depend on the wonderful, the counselor, my 